have a look at this. This is a bunch of corms for alocasias or elephant ears that I've grown last year from our signature blue turquoise spots uh, located in our uh, retaining wall. Uh, these are what they look like after they've wintered over. Uh, they've got some dried leaves on them, stems. I cut them down to about four inches off of the original corm. Uh, what looks like pieces of mud uh, at, in some cases, and these are the obvious uh, bulbs and corms that I'm trying to inspect right now. Uh, some of them have, I've been, I didn't cure them really well, so some of them have mushy consistencies to them that I uh, need to chop some of them up. But look at this one. This is a big clump of um, corms that I have grown in those spots. Um, what I'm doing today, hi, this is Louie. Welcome back to Acorn Hill, guys. What I'm doing today is I have uh, I painted this Gertrude Jekyll uh, resin pot and I plan on putting all these corms, stuff them in this pot and two other regular pots that I'm planning to put in some shady areas in our garden. This pot will go uh, along the front part of the house and this is the spot where I will be positioning the pot so we can get a big clump of alocasia elephant ears as we enter the house. It is pretty lightweight, about one third from the bottom I have uh, styrofoam peanuts uh, to make this pot light. Notice that I've set the pot on top of three pieces of concrete block so we can get proper drainage and prevent water from just sitting directly underneath the pot. This will cause root rot and we don't want that to happen. And also, not only for drainage, we will have enough air circulation because we lifted the pot off of the floor. After making sure and doubly checking whether I have good level on the pot, it is now time for me to start preparing the soil so we can dunk in all the corms of the elephant ears. Elephant ears are very hungry plants and to make sure that we get full insurance that the plants are well fed, what I'm doing here is I'm placing enough supply of blood meal which will be rich in nitrogen, again for leaf growth and good foliar growth. And also I will be putting Mycorrhizae Plus Biotone Starter Fertilizer mixed in really well with the well draining compost that I put inside the pot. Mix, drop, and done is the basic principle on how we will do this container project. We mix in the soil and the amendments. We dig in and drop all the different corms for the alocasia, and then we are done. Planting or placing all these corms inside this big pot couldn't be easier. I first selected the biggest corms and these are the ones that will go to the very back of the pot because we want the bigger growth all the way in the back since we have the wall which will act as the foil so that we could get all these green growth to really pop up. We then select all the medium sized corms to go along the middle of the arrangement and then the smaller ones to go along the very front rim of the pot. What this will do is will give us different variations of height of the smaller growing ones along the front. For what I call the middle story ones, we will have the medium growing allocations on the middle of the growth and the arrangement and the big high volume ones along the very back of the spot. It's unavoidable that putting all these corms together and grouping them will create some negative spaces in between and those are the spaces that need to be filled properly with soil. Tamping them in and firming them into those little holes and nooks and crannies will allow for any air space to be filled up properly with high rich soil that will allow these corms to grow combined together so we can get a firmer base and all these foliage and stalks will form and grow nicely and securely inside the spot. Pouring in a small amount of excess soil on top and leveling them off sweeping all the other dust that settled on top of the pot, watering this planting composition really well, and we are done with this project. On a short side note, how would we know that we have properly watered any plant that's planted inside the pot? A simple rule of thumb that I follow is as I continue to water in any potted plant, the soonest that I see any water leaching out and coming out from the bottom of the pot, that is the signal for me to stop watering and then watering it frequently throughout the day, mostly more often during the summer and every other day during cooler days. And here we have it guys, a month and a half after I've initially planted all the corms in this Gertrude Dreekel pot. This is what our current growth looks like. This was taken 
two days prior to the actual posting of this vlog we have all the different types of foliage all the smaller ones that are growing underneath the bigger foliage the middle story medium sized ones are growing really well and i've got that one big shield shape alocasia growing along the back i really like how this green is being highlighted because we have a gray colored pot and a gray brown background provided by the siding I hope you liked today's vlog. It's a simple planting project, a container project that anybody could do. If I can do this, I am confident that you guys out there can do the same, if not better than what I did. Thanks again for joining me on our channel. Thank you for liking all our videos. Continue to share and continue to subscribe to Acorn Hill if you haven't already. Provide your comments if you've grown alocasias before. Maybe you have some good growing tips that you could share to our audience, subscribers, and friends of the channel. With proper preparation and minimal effort in keeping them during the winter, alocasias are a worthwhile investment for any garden. They are feature plants that we will continue to collect and grow as we move into different growing seasons and planting them in different parts of our landscape. Here's hoping you are having a safe and happy summer. For now, this is your friend and presenter, Louis. Thanks for joining me in Acorn Hill, and we will see you back soon on the next video. Bye-bye for now.